You've probably used bath bombs before. Look at this one, it's so cute, just like me. But you probably didn't know that you were conducting acid-based reactions right in your bathtub. Like always, here are some words to know. A proton is a positively charged particle. An acid is a molecule that can donate protons. And a base is a molecule that can accept protons. Also, when I talk about protons in this video, I mean the hydrogen atom without its electron. The main ingredients in a bath bomb are baking soda, which is the base, and citric acid, which is obviously the acid. So you guys are probably wondering why this bath bomb isn't reacting. It has the acid and the base all compact inside of it. And the answer to your question is water. Yep, the thirst is real for these bath bombs. The water provides the environment for the acid-base reaction to occur. Simply put, the acid donates some of its protons to the base. And water is a special molecule that can readily accept and donate protons. This ability helps the acid donate its protons to the base, forming a new acid which automatically separates into CO2 and water. At the end of this particular reaction, the acid and the base are neutralized, forming a salt, water, and CO2, which is the gas that forms those cool bubbles in the tub. So I'm going to show you a quick tutorial of this acid-base reaction using the raw ingredients used in a bath bomb. All you need is baking soda, citric acid, and water. And there you have it. Right before your eyes, you're seeing the same reaction that happens when you drop a bath bomb in your bathtub. Cool, right? This is the same type of reaction that happens when you take Alka-Seltzer tablets and that causes erosion on statues, just with different chemicals. The company that sells this bath bomb promotes themselves as using fresh ingredients for their products. And I want you guys to know that fresh doesn't always mean organic and organic doesn't always mean free from chemicals. I just want you guys to know that chemicals are everywhere. They're all around us. Even water is a chemical. Its chemical name is dihydrogen monoxide. And that can sound scary. These chemical names can sound scary. If you ever come across an unfamiliar chemical, if you're looking at your shampoo bottle, your lotion bottle, maybe you're looking at the juice that you're drinking, one of the best things to do is to look up its MSDS worksheet. And there it will tell you the many things about that chemical. If it's an irritant, if it is very, very harmful for you to use. We used to look up MSDS worksheets all the time in chemistry class. And one of my mentors told me that it should be something that we all should be doing because we're using these cleaning agents to clean our houses and we need to know what chemicals are in them. People get rashes and they don't know where it comes from. It could be from their detergent, maybe there's a chemical that they're allergic to. So with anything that we're using, it'd be smart for us to look at the MSDS worksheet. For example, this bath bomb has SLES in it. It is a surfactant. Some bath bombs have oils in them and surfactants are used to help the water and oil mix. It is also used as a foaming agent in many hand soaps and things like that. It is also an irritant and I learned that from reading the MSDS worksheet. And I'm really not trying to scare you guys. I just want you guys to be informed so that you guys can make informed decisions when you're buying products. So, with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's the end of my video. Please comment below if you have any questions or suggestions. Please talk to me. I don't know what you guys want. I don't know what you guys are interested in. So please let me know so I can make new cool videos. I have some cool things coming down the pipeline. So, be on the lookout for that. And I hope you guys have a nice day. Bye.